go more on instincts, so I do. And also, the Navy ships, too, were quite helpful in supplying a lot of classified stuff with their sonar crystals. Yeah, the, the, the transducers, that's the one you're describing? Or the actual crystals themselves for, yeah, the, sure. for the generators and stuff? Well, on these ships, after they destroy a life extension, they call it d life In the sonar room in Jezebel, the recording system for the sonar, they had these drawers that you want to put O down here, they pull them up. It's classified. That's an invitation for me to go and get this thing. <laughs> okay, the whole drawer comes out. <clears throat> classified. Cool. <laughs> so I take it off to the war measures room in my room. Sit down, look at this thing, and pull it out. Big round container like that. I got a hunch this could be a crystal of it. I think there's crystals in there. Because all these temperature requirements and things. So Everything's got to be temperature controlled. And I slowly work it where I can get it apart. And the end comes off, and of course it's full of foam. I'm going to work the foam out and work right around this thing, and out comes all these beautiful quarter inch hex octagonal crystals. Silver plated. Silver plated? Half. Hot. Octagonal or whatever they were. About like this. That's how big they were? No. no the quarter were. inch. Quarter inch? Thing. Yeah. <coughs> octagonal? Uh, definitely not pentagon, pen, pentagon, but octagonal, I think. Uh, it's. Stop sign. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think eight. Yeah. Yeah. I should know my shapes better, but I don't. It's a, uh, uh, yes, anyway. So I found again another piece of... Oh, wait, wait, these things were just packed in there? They were put in very carefully, put in there with silver tabs separating them. And then it was all filled in with, uh, Put it in this container and that's put in the box. So this was basically a crystal oscillator, but it had these it had to be this. They're kind of delay lines, I would call them. Good find any handbooks on it on the warship, but huh. I was thinking about this and because I was under funding at the time from Japan to build crystal pop cells, and I thought maybe I could use these with the very tight eight self resonance material I have. So I did put in in evening time a lot of work putting together a square foot device for Mr. Hiroshi Yamabe from Hiroshima City, Japan. And you know, I, I went by other studies like neo beam metal pins for capturing and collecting electrons. So this thing became getting pretty big, cubic foot. Kind of testing it, rearranging it, letting out uh, like a lot of other salts I was using, raw shell salts, other minerals, galena, germanium. I don't know about this. It's just were, were some were some of these materials and things you would just try? Yeah, trial and error, a lot of this stuff. And okay. This thing started putting up voltage. Low voltage first, and of course, Mr. Yamabe wanted me to videotape everything. I don't know if I got videos of this. I might have. I do have one. For another human group. But this, but this stuff you're telling me now, you were already working on stuff for the China, for Chinese. Uh, China is just recent stuff. Just Japanese, I was just in Japan. Japan. Okay, so at that time you were already working, you already had a contract with them to build these. Yeah, no. So I'm building this unit. As I said, I had a lot of time in my hands, so I used all that time in the warships in the evening I do a little bit of this. Yeah. Quarter mill. And that's good. And no complaints. Okay, that's all you want. So, um, okay, I should step back to something that was done when I got more involved in the free energy thing. Yeah. A group of businessmen came to visit myself and Ian. Uh, a real trade group, Carl David Anderson, and they were connected to a group of people around the world 
let the owners bell helicopter, ex-parliament members, ex-government members, a whole group of men. They're looking for technologies. So Carl David Anderson, uh, actually the president is Joe Ho, who actually I, did, I saw him two years ago in Vancouver. We had uh, dinner together. We had a lot of fun. They came to me. We have a problem. We have this guy that uh, keeps wanting money for magnets that are put on two by fours that are spun around. Uh huh. <laughs> See, you got bitten, huh? Uh, by the, by the, oh dear. <laughs> yeah, the free energy uh, skimmish. You Sounds like. Up. I say, all I can do to be fully honest, you can either leave it or take it. I can build you one unit to so was promised, delivered, one electron volt at a milliamp here. You can either leave it or take it, I don't care. And this was the crystal cell device yeah. that you were That's, referring to. Yeah. But they didn't know it. They got, uh, how much? You want to start with 10,000? That's true. That'll do it. My secret was that I had to kind of supply these things with pair of radio cells in Ohio. Barium titanate cylinders out of a Navy ship. So you could get them at the time? Yeah, I put an order for about 12 of them. You could buy them, you could order them. I could order them right at pair of radio cells in Ohio. <laughs> I did. And, you, and, then you, and then you gave it to them exactly. for a little markup. <laughs> yeah, well, big markup. No, I just said I'll put eight of these cylinders. I did explain, I was not. Yeah, okay. I didn't build these. These came from surplus. Right, right, right. You just constructed the device. So I made uh, uh, six of them in a cylinder shape with a, a box over it with holes through it that they actually made for me. And I had a dial where you could turn because these things discharge have several thousand volts. Yeah. And they got a refill again. That's what you, yeah. So this thing would go around lighting up a light bulb. A nail. So every time it would go around, it would discharge off one of the cylinders. And yeah, by the time it got to the... It was charged again. Yeah, so that excited them. Okay. And they, um, they contacted uh, the main investors from China, who are going to come over and see a demonstration of this and give us $24 million. Well, then they never showed up. So... Okay. That's so, life. Yeah, so the barium titanate cylinders, in one of your videos you were describing you found a way that you could not have it pulse, but you could get a constant voltage out of it. <laughs> she, <laughs> says, uh, she says yes. I guess so. <clears throat> yeah, I did get an interesting voltage. Well, how do you do that? Can you just spread it? Um, a certain resonance with two of them. So you had to have two cylinders, yeah. and you could get the cylinders basically to yeah. give you a nice resonant oscillation yeah. between the two, oh, okay. uh, with coils and capacitors. Uh, with a little bit of that only. Okay. I mean, we just got well. Okay. <laughs> Scully's double. Uh, Caroline Muller, good friend of mine, actress. She's highly interested in the stuff I do. And she and I would play around with these things on a. Play the metal. It literally, under load, these things would build up a force field. You could, well, you could grab onto them and just push your hands away. Really? Like a stagnant, high voltage force field or something? Yeah, you just, it felt like they, you, just, you try and grab it, you can't. Really? It just, it wants to push you away. Yeah, it's like she, you were covered in magnets of the wrong polarity or something. She put her business card in one and just shot it up. And she, she, she's up for anything. I mean, she's up to blowing stuff up. She's quite a character. Yeah. I got a lot of pictures of us. But, but, anyway. but this was the bite, um, the, the, the uh, sonar cylinder, yeah. it just on a metal plate? On a metal plate. What kind of metal plate, though? Just a thin aluminum plate. Right? Thin aluminum plate. Yeah, and that's it? The cylinder on an aluminum uh, plate? However, I had a crown amplifier a Ma M700, uh, 0 to 110 volts output, 2,500 watts hooked to it. And going into the amp was a simple microphone. So what this thing would do is the point the microphone, I set up a resonance. It would feedback. 
You hook the you hook the amplifier up to the plate. No, to the almost feedback. The setup's such a feedback clip that it actually, in some cases, takes the sound and put it somewhere else. You had people on the street screaming and yelling, and what's that? Weird sound. And I'd be with either Mar uh, Marianne or Carolyn, because Marianne was interested in too, one of my neighbors. But this, you could, you could sense it was over there, but it's right here. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, we need to go to the experiment because I still want. I'm still confused on where it's connected. You, you have a metal plate with the cylinder on there. Well, see, the cylinder would sit on the metal plate. Yeah. Because of the carpet, basically. Okay. And then where would you hook your amplifier? Right on. Actually, the output would go directly to the uh, negative part of the barium cylinder. On the cylinder. Yeah. And then hook up your microphone to your amplifier. Yeah. And just bring the micro. Tune it, like move it around, and this thing will move in different directions. Okay. On the plate. On the plate. Yeah. But after I did a few modifications, and Karen and Omar got some ideas. I mean, it turned to into this thing you couldn't lift up. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah, that sounds like an interesting, just simple phenomenon. That you could put together and try, you know, play around with that idea. The only video I have that would be Harry Delighter Productions. You've probably seen it on the internet. Okay. I think, I think I've seen some where you've, you're you holding the microphone and it's on a plate and things are moving around. Yeah. And that's the experiment, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was fun. I mean, it was very unusual. And um, Marianne, uh, after Caroline was... Marianne got involved and she called it the Marianne effect. There was, um, see, Lee, another girl from Lee, Denise. All these black ops people would show up because Marianne contacted them to come around my place and she's going to give a demonstration of it. I said, I don't care, do whatever you want, it's cool. But what happened was she left the unit on with something over it and burned out a major component inside of this crown amp. So when she was to do her demonstration, it wasn't working. It kind of ticked me off. I mean, where are you getting another one of these darn things? Yeah. And since this is them, 600, 700. So that, um... What, what component was it? The amplifier portion? The blue up? I couldn't find out what it was. Oh, very weird. Couldn't fix it either. It was a special, it's right on the West Crown Amps history. Okay. Picture of it, and I tried to find another one like that, but I couldn't. Hmm. The one I got came from Surplus and was used in the uh, Navy. Okay, so it was a Navy piece of equipment. Drive their transducer. But it was a common thing available at the time of the breakthrough of the Crown Amps. Okay. Am I talking too much, Doc? You are. But yeah, that was a lot of fun doing that. And we'd take the sound and put it out in the street, so. Fuck that, I got to bring the witch. <laughs> yeah, it so nice. could have been the wrong time frame, it would have. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, even the, the levitation effects would go from the lab upstairs. People would get excited from the cops, <laughs> cops come pick them and take it to the hospital. Oops. It's okay. Yeah, because, you know, they. We talked about the TV set slow going. You, you mean the net? The neighbors. Above me, yeah. He was carried away at a league and I said, girlfriend, my team had witnessed it. Really? Yeah. So, so that might have been those like hot spots that they were detecting at the big lab. Right? Yeah. These hot spots were happening. Uh, would you consider those to be happening on a node then? Yeah, I think so. Right? Because there's an effect that happened. Oh, another film crew. <laughs> Tom Sky filmed. <clears throat> so I got back from Scottsdale, I was married before to another lady, and I got back and I did something for History Channel, a bunch of TV people, Tom Sky came. And the effects hit the whole area of the West. <laughs> it, was, it was a talk of the town kind of thing. They brought in the fire marshal, brought in the mayor, they brought the, a lot of problems, brought Ken Shoulder's interest, Stephen Seagal's interest in this thing. Because I've had to phone him, say, okay, Steve's in the center. I don't like phone people that are in the industry to, you know, just. Oh, yeah. Hey. But I did. Hey. And Steve was going to come up in March. He never showed up. And Sandy Fox never showed up. But said, they're very busy people. 
I know what it's like sometimes. Oh. It's good. <laughs> Yeah, it's been crazy. Uh, that, um... Come on. Come on. Quite a bit. Go find Nancy. Come on. Where's Nancy? Go find Nancy. <laughs> that was, um... Uh, that was really sort of the beginning of the end. Uh, you and Paris Hilton got it going. Really? Friend of mine. Yeah. Or, uh, so she loved, she loved my TV show, TV show TLC. Friend of yours. And she got involved writing Tom Sky. It's the weirdest, craziest time. And after all that, uh, I think History Channel was just prior to that. History. I got the. They, I got this video. History Channel. I had not uploaded the that one, but I had their information and to DVD. Okay. They filmed a lot of stuff. So... And then Earth Black Holes Bermuda Triangle. Tom Sky had to be taken to the hospital in Los Angeles over this whole thing. Well... Something affected him. Mm -hmm. Luckily I saved all of his emails. That's why I promptly said, okay, who knows about this? More than I did, uh, Ken Schultz. Maybe going into the spiritual realm. Steven Seagal, he's into this, but more spiritual. Mm hmm How, how did he, you... He got, over, he got over it, okay. Yeah, okay. How, how do you... Um, Crazy stuff. Yeah, a lot of your belief on some of these experiments, um, if, you, if you get online, you know, there's a couple videos of where the guy's talking about being like a mental thing, where you're actually like, do you believe that you're the one capable of doing this, or is it the equipment creating these frequencies? Oh, it's definitely equipment, it would not be psychic, but that's their opinion. Yeah, but you believe it's the equipment? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that's a conflict, and it's not really been addressed that I've seen, so it's, it's good to hear, you know, your opinion on it, not their opinion on it. Yeah. I want to know what you think, I don't care about what they think. Yeah. You're the guy doing the experiment. So when you so when you moved so when you moved some of this stuff and you did a demonstration at a place, like you had to go somewhere and do a demonstration, it, you could pretty much set up and replicate the experiment. Yeah, pretty good. So could 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 you do that today? Oh yeah. You could. Yeah. And do you have the equipment but you don't have all the equipment you need. No, no. You need like what do you need? Like, just, just I'm just curious. I, what would well, you need? Basically, getting into well, I have some of the signal generators I do have here. Yeah. But electrostatic generators and high voltage machinery. You you got to have those. Oh yeah. As part of the process. Yeah. So, with just the high voltage things, the phenomenon won't happen. With just those, with just the radio, the phenomenon. Will well, that happen? You have to have a combination of um, all of these things. And is it is it all dependent on a particular set frequency that you set up? Uh, yes, it is. And it's um, was luckily recorded by Hathaway and myself too over time. And I did modifications for it. Okay, so, in, so let me ask you this question. If you created the signal, the, 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 the proper signal with all the right equipment, could you record the signal, and then you could get rid of all the equipment and just play the signal audibly? No, it's not. Uh, it's not nothing to do with audio. It's, it's the it's the actual RF. RF. Yeah, that okay. I'm doing with the levitation stuff. Yeah. Okay. So Nancy started taking over with other things with audio and RF, but <clears throat> if I had to replicate it, it would be back to engineering again. <laughs> yeah. So you told me earlier. It's boring. Very boring. You're ready to move on to something else. Yep. So what are you doing? What am I doing? Well, I'm interested in antique gun restoration machine tools. I like uh, exploring life extension. Um, I don't think a lot of people know that you're a really good machinist. I uh, did my own research. I don't know how much information is public, but you're a really good machinist. No, that would I. I yeah. kind of You've been doing it for a long time. I mean, it's story, I like, uh, story that way. I love it. Actually, I've talked by old timers. 
Okay. I really admire old timers t- teaching how to do repair machines. Okay. How to redo Babbitt bearings and old drilling machines and lathes and them. So I taught a lot by old sorts. Knew a lot of stuff, and I'm always learning every day something new. So my interest uh, nowadays more into mm, life extension uh, antique cannons and artillery life in general. One of the things I can I can ask you is your women. I, oh, women! <laughs> you that, nothing wrong with that. Wait, what about wait? We'll get to that next. But um, okay, so you. I don't even know where I was going now. <laughs> you got me all screwed up. So okay, so right now, um, I totally lost my train of thought. I'm just gonna sit here and think about I it. I derailed you. You totally. Sorry. But not not purposely. I'm actually thinking of something totally different, and you like totally derailed it. What time much? Whatever. <laughs> Going into the anti gravity stuff. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. So you know you're 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 doing something else. Um, I forgot. Cannons, artillery, beaches. Yeah. Uh, I like acting. As you may notice, some of my videos I act silly on, and I've always been that way ever since I was a kid. I always had these people I imitate. Yeah. Because I think laughter is the best medicine. Really, it's laughter. <laughs> you are. You are exactly right. A lot of people will just stress out over something, and sometimes you just have to sit back and laugh, and it will relieve your stress. Like it's just like poof, like shoe fly. Yeah. Even though you're still in the same bad situation, you feel better about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I can make jokes oh. about serious situations something. Yeah. I, I know what I know what I was going to say. Don't be real. Okay. You have always been open source in a way you really and maybe you can elaborate but you don't like holding back information secretly right you like to express oh yeah i do and that's why you always call the news yeah or get news media in there and always do this stuff is because you want the information to be in the public and so your new thing or lately you're trying to do more things um like Doing the, um, with Carla. Yeah, I mean, that's one of my favorite characters. He used to sort of express himself in the most ridiculous fashion. Like, so Carla is an expression <laughs> of the most ridiculous fashion you can come up with, pretty much. Oh, yeah. I just, everything hangs loose with Carla. <laughs> we can see that. Uh, you should see my fans go in shock on YouTube or <laughs> wherever they are. I'm sure. I'm sure uh, <laughs> I don't know what the Colonel thinks of Prince Leisha's time. But you can express yourself that way, and it's it's all fun. Yeah, I kind of express it in a way that's kind of like life in general. It's how, you know, it's just it's just fun. And some of my char- I used to have a favorite character, the major, who's a, a British kind of person. I'd go ahead with his carrying his pistol, and nothing would stop him, and he'd just keep going. I kind of got bored of him. <laughs> so you but felt over, over the years, I had a lot of characters. I mean, I had okay. Otto, the simple pig farmer. My brother and I, we used to do it day after day, just doing these imitations as kids. And then the end <laughs> helped me out with her funny little things. <laughs> so it's hard to find playmates that will, you can play with that will do that kind of stuff. Yeah, that, that enjoy that as well. So, um, yeah, so, so one of the reasons I'm here is actually Nancy contacted me. Right. And kind of hoping to, I don't know, open the possibility of different ways of open sourcing. One of the things that, that Nancy's trying to figure out is if it's possible to 3D print some of these um, battery cells, or Johnny tubes, as you call them. Uh, so... I think that, personally, is the future of this non-moving part technology, the zero-point energy stuff. Yeah. So do you see a crystal cell as a zero-point energy device? I do, yeah. And. Because there's two people I know that have my highest respects is uh, Dr. Marcus Reed and Dr. Franklin E. Reed, who has a 1996 patent on a zero-point energy collector that uses barium titanate. Okay. And when I was in Austria, I saw Dr. Well, my host, Dr. Peter Kokoschnik, discovered the zero-point energy. 
fluctuations. The so it's no noise. The zero point energy fluctuations. Mm -hmm. How do you describe that? Uh, uh, moving part technology. See what uh, Dr. Peter Kokoshin had, had was two round steel balls brought close together and the resonance would happen that he would think that they were zero point energy quantum fluctuations. Take note, 1996, Dr. Franklin E. Reed's patent uses two round balls again with cavitation that collects zero point energy. And interesting to note that his device on the patent application of being bought up by IBM. Really? Dr. Marcus Reed's device is much like my early crystal power cells and was it also of interest to another scientist, I guess on my last demonstration to visit me, was crystal power cells. I made them a bunch. Oh, by the way, I think this is the key, gut feeling. Ain't even wrong, but I think it's the key. What's the key? Non-moving parts, technology, and spheres, and that kind of thing. And spheres. What, 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 what do you see so special about the sphere? It conforms to the atom, it conforms to the universe. It conforms to gravimetric tension. It conforms to a lot of things. It conforms to the broadcast antenna. So do you think do you think a crystal battery cell in a spherical shape would be the best option? From what I understand from a friend, there was a lot of permission in the manufacturing company uh, down in Los Angeles. Uh, a very interesting friend of mine, Pierre Sinclair, the most powerful barium technique device he saw was spherical. Okay. Round, hollow, ball, half silver plated. And here, I believe, thinks it's very tight it is the way to go to non-moving part, dynamic, self-reacting material. Is it? Is that something that you can make from scratch? No, not, not me. Somebody else could. Yeah. But well, they make it. But I'm just saying, like, you've never constructed that material. No, I think there's shortcuts to that. Yeah, no, I never have. But yeah, because the layman's guy like me, who's got a little garage space and maybe a have kitchen that can steal away from the wife during the day, they can make a crystal cell with yeah. these other components. But it's in theory, it's the same principles that are working. Well, can you describe what you think is actually happening in a crystal cell? Uh, yeah, my, my business partner and I agreed to a video you put together. It's, uh, okay, there's micro part flakes of metal in there that act as micro casimir effect plates. Okay. That yes. capture these micro, micro, micro frequencies. Okay. And excites it within the crystal realm. So that effect is happening because there's ambient noise? Ambient uh, energy. So if you were, well, I guess it doesn't matter. There, there is that too, but the zero point energy, if you try and zero in on it, it's your main focus to capture it. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but in that fashion, you might be able, you could, can, you have. Many names have been called ether oscillations with Peter, Dr. Peter Kokoshina called them. Yes. Great potential. He is extremely excited. And a nice, bright, hot summer day when he got super excited <coughs> discovering, showing me actually all this stuff. But I was um, traveling to, um, this is Salzburg, I was traveling to um, Vienna at the end so I could we would travel Munich, Salzburg, Vienna, and Graz City a lot. Had to LA and back once in a while. Okay. That was my two years as a guest of Peter's. Um, so the. Learned a lot from him. <laughs> the. Um, oh, go ahead. And the wife was a medical doctor, Dr. Margarita. Okay. And the sister. So these crystal cells, right? Um, you're referring to them as the cashmere plates and how they are. Mm -hmm. You're not referring to the inside and outside electrode as the cashmere plates. You're referring to the metallic material within the crystal cell structure itself oh. as the cashmere plates. Yeah. Yeah. So you have <clears throat> so you have to have a metallic substance within the crystal. Micro amounts of it. Dope. 
doped in it. Yeah. Okay. And is in. See, I've made other power cells that I have to get a, a company to do them for for me. Okay. And because I don't have any machines that even do it, but they do it to my recipes. And I made for uh, my Japanese sponsor. They made a few good ones. Half of them were done from a German sponsor, Thomas Messer, who um, after the after the Japanese left, he was my next sponsor. Gave me a quarter of a million, and I made him some unique units. I actually got a video of it, but very powerful, a lot of voltage. But a lot of breakdown. Okay. These things with this side go up to seventy thousand volts. I've seen it. I've videoed it. Seventy thousand. Seventy thousand volts all over the place. On the this, this cubic foot thing is sitting on the toilet in <laughs> my apartment, going ballistic. Here I am. <laughs> Doing out art. I even videotaped it for my sponsor, and I, I don't want to copy <laughs> that. I hope. <laughs> you have Here to I see am that. going for the phone. Almost going for the phone. Fire department. This is a this is a residential building. I mean, this thing. This was in your apartment. Yeah. <laughs> I was laying down in the bed and I had the video cam on it. I thought I'm gonna take a rest. You know? <laughs> and I hear this <laughs> crackling sound. And it's just those bolts are going right into the. If that cracks, back of the bowl. If that cracks and the water gets out, it's a lot of really the hell of a lot of problems. Uh, if that bolt uh, yeah. it's more. It's gonna be bigger problems. The fire department time. Yeah. And it, it, it died. Thank God. It just quit. It quit. It just. It just shut off. Smoke and fire. No. Oh, there was smoke. Really? But then it just quit. Yeah, quit. Thank God. <laughs> the only other time I actually was after with Thomas Messer. I have it on video. Not all of it, because he uh, rented me a space which was key called Lab Number Two. Okay. Small. Well, Little industrial space. That uh, <laughs> scared me. I actually got it into a plastic garbage bag, flipped it over, went down outside the elevator, went across the street, opened the doors. Good life. Number two is only in one half a block away. <laughs> Took the whole thing and threw it in the sink. Stayed there a while, made sure that it was not going to do anything more, and then I left it. That stuff. Anyway, <laughs> so Thomas, uh, I think he came into town for Germany. We went over there and I showed him exactly where I dumped it. He would always say, Unbelievable! <laughs> Unbelievable. I got a lot of video of Thomas and I in LA, by the way. Because he would hang up with the and I and big stuff, deals and stuff. And that was um, the other one. The other one I made for the Japanese got seized by the US Customs. You tried, to ship it? you tried to ship it? Oh, well, Two he years? was trying to, he, put, he had it all ready when it was finished. He came with all these tools, built a little box for it, and he just went, this is priceless, I'm thinking. He's everything all pre-cut, little nails, little Japanese, nails, little hammer, baby. little strap. Okay, John, okay, Johnson, I go now, I go now. <laughs> See, that's, that's the way it was, you know, we had a lot of fun together. It was fun. And <clears throat> he, he, he went though, and he was seized by the U.S. Customs. Really? Took it? Taken it apart. Never got he, back? He got it back. Oh. He got it back, all disorientated. He shipped it to me directly from Japan to Canada. I got it. I repaired it. Shipped it direct, directly from Vancouver, directly to Hiroshima City. No going through the United States stuff. So, he got it safe and it's still running. And that's the one that's still running. What I was told in 2004, because he uh, came over. What year did you make it? Mm, I had to been. Brenda Roberts filmed that 98. So the video I got it was six ish years. Currently, if it's still running, it's a lot longer. But at that time, it would be six years it was running. I was right when I was doing the Arcade Covenant because he came over after several years absent. About four years. He always stayed at the Sheridan because his friend owns the Sheridan. <laughs> it helps, I guess. 
What what was the voltage in current from the cell that um, operated? The Thomas Master cell? Yeah. Uh, it had it been 25,000 volts. Oh my god. DC? Yeah, the amps, it was like a light bulb too, and I got that on video. It, is that DC? Yeah, that's DC. So, are all the cells that you've created a DC? Or is there some AC stuff going in some of them that... No, it's all been DC, direct current. DC. Which is not an issue if you want to run something with these two vibrator to vibrate at 60 hertz, but... Yeah. Um, DC is good but for most like portable applications. Usually, it's always DC anyway. I know I make for Japan and Thomas a lot of these cells, and in between projects with business partners, like I had other investors. One was a civil engineer, Richard Brewer, and I and myself at the end. We got together for about a year, wrote a contract. I still have the contract. Made him one. Can can you? We took it right to the Canadian Research and Development people and put it on the table right in the main office, Vancouver. Here we have a free energy device. How can you, you gotta help us. And, you know, they looked at it and thought it was kind of cool and you know, kind of steampunk look to it or whatever. <laughs> I mean, these guys would say, well, we don't know what to do with some of this. What you should do is take it to the military. They would know what to do with it. So here we have tested out by Alec in Vancouver and others. A free energy ready to roll. If you want to go roll, you know, analyze, mm -hmm. take apart, let's build them, get going. No. So we carry out. He's very depressed. Richard is. What the hell is wrong with people? You know, yeah, really. Here's something that <clears throat> it works. Yeah. Yeah. And then all the number of times and presented on television on main TV on the TLC. Discovery Channel, Beyond Adventure. And, 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 like and still to this day, it's the same way, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, eh, this works. People people are playing with it on YouTube, but there's not a company out there that you can buy one from. Right? I know, I suggest, yeah. It's, it's, I it's a simple, they make they make batteries, why wouldn't they make crystal power cells? Yeah, right? that's what we wanted to do, you know. We, What's the... Try to explain it, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's do it. But it's like people, it's like... Brain dead. I guess. It's they're just, not interested in it. I mean, I had public demonstrations of these things in Denver, Colorado, when they're filming Dumber and Dumber. The beautiful demo, I won an award with that. <laughs> uh, sponsored by Dennis Weaver. And at the same time they're filming the Tesla movie. I got to be in that movie. Which Tesla the, movie? Uh, Tesla Man Out of Time, I think. It's a documentary in PBS. Okay. That could fit in there. That's where I met Kirk Thatcher, co producer of Star Trek IV. And that's where I met that him and him met up, and we went to LA and did his group. But again, even the main media. How many can you get with Discovery Channel? Uh, yeah, exactly. Showing the power cell. Hi, Nancy. You're in the camera shop. Come on in. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> so I'm interviewing John. Yep. You're on the film right now. Okay. I might use some of this. This is Nancy Hutchinson. Hi. And maybe really quickly for like a short second, you could tell me why I'm here. You contacted me. I contacted you. It was actually, John had sent me a link to the forum that was talking about Sterling. And I'm, I'm like this research nut, you know, who are these people, who you know. I just started going around and I found um, this site where you, you're doing your open sourcing. And I thought, well, you know, John has this dream of open sourcing, but the challenge is his communication. Mm -hmm. And... We're, we're working with Carla. Yep. <laughs> we talked about Carla a little bit. And Don. And um, trying to come up with some little short pieces that hopefully the pieces will come together so people can get, a, get a, an understanding. Um, and then I also found out there that you guys have been involved in 3D printing. And so we have this um, 
technology here that John's moved into. He's not doing the levitation and the metal stuff. Um, we use that down the Gulf of Mexico. It's, it's more of a, a broad field effect and uh, getting information to the subatomic level with that isochronic pulse. And we kind of talked about that a little bit. We can talk more about it. Yeah, we can do that then too. But uh, when we were in the Gulf, Fukushima blew. And Daryl, who you're going to meet, Daryl was working with us down there. He had come from Alabama, I think it was, and came down to Florida. And um, we stood there, the three of us, and said, well, this is the end of Earth. <laughs> it, literally. Yeah. Uh, literally, this is the end of Earth. It's bad deal. And still, still to this day, is terrible. Uh, yeah, it's still, well, they can't find the, the fuel, which everybody has said is melted through from yeah. four years ago. Yeah. Um, I saw the news release that they publicly announced that it did. Well, they can't find it. They publicly announced they can't find it. They sent the robot down. They can't find it. Okay. Because they showed, like, basically it melted down right. in the streams and it's gone. And there's a lot of things happening along the coast that are, um, there's a lot of dead sea lions and maybes and um, the starfish basically wiped out. We have starfish here. I don't know about the, the sea lions and things here. There was a dead sea lion on the beach a little while ago. Um, and birds missing. We have we do have birds here. But when we arrived, um, Port Orford was hundreds of dead birds, hundreds of dead sea birds on the on the beach. So um, and and we noticed the burnout because this is this, this is we came here because this is ground zero from Fukushima. This is where it hit between the Pacific and the Cascades. And we noticed all the burnout on all the vegetation along here. And um, we came with the equipment running. I refused to just come in here and then wait 20 days or so to get it up and running. Yeah, so we came with a, a mobile. Yeah, the mobile. Yeah, that was a SWAT bus that had the radio on the top. Yep. So, uh, and and then coming from this point, it was um, we lost a child, a grandbaby, from. Mm -hmm. um, Part of the statistics of the increased um, infant mortality along the coast. And, really? Yep. Yeah, and um, my son and his wife living in Portland. And shortly after that, um, he had 33 years old, um, rapid advance of the heart disease, and had a heart attack on the beach. And he flatlined in the hospital. Mm -hmm. He's back. But my grandbaby at that time said, uh, yeah. You want to know I came here? And I'm, I'm a crazy one. I mean, I'm, I am. I mean, that's, so I just kind of work with it, you know. Crazy's good. You can fly if you're crazy, you know. You can, you can, or you can fall with style. Yeah, fall with <laughs> style. But um, she, I kind of tried to explain to her with the whole Fukushima thing, and you can't taste it or feel it, but it's no. there. And, and she said, will it, will it uh, give somebody a heart attack? And I said, yeah. And then she said, you're here to save my daddy, aren't you? And I said, well, him and you and whoever else we can get. Well, uh, we defined what our, our shielding that John created was, and it wasn't reaching Portland from here. Okay. Uh, and that's when it was, let's find something that we can uh, make this go further. This, our, all of our stuff is pointed right at Fukushima. There's a ley line here, that's why John's here. Is to hit the ley line and to get into Fukushima with it. Okay. Um, but that's when um, working a year with people on the internet and ideas and things, and then um, one of the ideas kind of worked once, so we knew that we could actually do some kind of recording on a crystalline structure, and then John and I just went to the Run it down to the very basics. What in nature records on radio frequencies? It's magnetite. And we got a whole beach of it out here. Mm -hmm. Collected it and talked about that. Got an old speaker and pulled the magnet and dragged it along there with the dog leash. <laughs> You're the dog leash. Yep. And then started working on how to make that happen and uh, went back to the Hutchison Crystal Power Cell and modified that. And you were, and you were re recording the 
right. signal on the magnetite. Yeah. So the signal is the same signal you're sending out. Yeah. But now they can be they can basically be sent anywhere in the world. And we're using and work as transmitters. Great. And we tested all of that with different plants along here. We actually discovered the the plant holding the signals down the Gulf of Mexico. This John has a big geyser counter tubes mm -hmm. that's just hooked up to like a speaker. Yeah. So you hear the clicks. Yeah. Well with that in different uh, plants along the grass and even along the top of the water, it was playing the tones, the music, the, the Geiger counter was. So, we, <laughs> so, that, so we, we figured that there was something in that. So then there's a lot of testing with the, we call them Johnny tubes. You could, nobody could get John in a box, we got him in a tube. <laughs> so it's a Johnny tube, John, John in a tube, a Johnny tube. And so then testing this, and testing them as much as we could here, then go. Then we had a good friend of ours off-site um, in Arizona testing, actually two people testing down there with radioactive samples, and it's effective. So then the next step is to find out if they're 3D printable. Yeah, and so... Hopefully I can help. Right. Or at least guide you. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're 3D printable, but which 3D printer has all these different ways of, of doing 3D with metal. Yes. We're doing the metal. And then, I mean, it's, it's possible to bring it along in, it, they're self-powered. So they, they run and run and run without, but there, it's a very tiny bit of power. And we, yep. we've used um, some organ stuff with wrapping them with steel wool and wool to kind of, kind of amplify that. Uh, However, you know, in with working with John's crystal power cells for that year before we went to the BP Gulf of Mexico stuff, we had we actually had it worked out that we could have something about the size of this table that runs the entire house. And you know, the crystal cells. the ones yeah those that size it's like that size it's been open source. So you have to basically build that many of them. About twenty thousand, yeah. Twenty thousand of them. Yeah. And they have to be put, the power house. put in certain patterns that they have to be in in order for them to work. They talk to each other literally, okay. and they work with each other in certain patterns. And we've worked on all those patterns, and so that's where that's where we're at when the VP thing happens. So okay. Now the three D. If I can get something that's, you know, one one hundredth of the size, because mm -hmm. it's all happening on such a small level. Yeah, yeah. You were saying it's like the surface. It's not how much quantity you have. It's, it's not how much the power area that actually is. And I tested that with like um, gold pins and a circuit board, and so I was getting, you know, point seven volts just on this little tiny piece that was on a gold ring and a, and a gold pin. So okay. it is possible, and they, and they have now. 3D printers with two different circuit boards. Yep. Well, I want a, I want a dimensional. I don't want something flat. I want something dimensional. Yep. We'll see what we can figure out on that. Yeah. And so then our goal is for the next year here just to pound, get some, and just start pounding with it. And 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 Johnny took tubes took about 50 different prototypes to come up with the one that works or the ones that we're using now. I'm sure there's other uh, other yeah. types that would work. Um, we're going to be building one tomorrow. We're going to build one. You're going to you're going to sit down there, and I'm just going to tell you what to do. Cool. And we can open source that. Yeah, we can open source it. The challenge is that, that the other people don't have this equipment that we use to print okay. it on. Now, what we're hoping is that one can one that's printed can then make another one, but we haven't done that yet. Okay. It was our goal to get out, and we've gotten a couple dozen across the U.S. and in Europe and in Australia. So we so, wanted to get them out communicating with each other. So when you make one, you set the crystal structure up to have this frequency, then you're saying if you make another one, you could use that one to actually signal that one. Yes. And then you can make another one signal yes. that one. So you don't need the original equipment, you just need the signal imprint, imprinted on that crystal, basically. And we had one person that did that um, out of this area. Okay. Um, so it wasn't in the field. And was able, to, the, the, the one that he used to make the next one, it, was, it wasn't as strong. I mean, it was probably it was a, yeah, like a third as But it had the signal. It had the signal. So there's hope for oh, right. some way to make that work. And, he, power maybe. and he used magnetite that was 
from his place, it wasn't imprinted here, and he didn't have the lid square that was imprinted, and all these different things. Okay. So, um, it is possible to do it, to take one and, and go. And um, actually, several people that we had sent these out to, to take them and set them up, um, one of them was one of the people that worked with us for a year in, in developing it, uh, said, oh, time to make some money, and he disappeared with, with it. Imagine that. And two of them that are in Japan have not been set up. And um, maybe they're being studied. Yep. Oh, look, this works. Let's study it. And they're not, right, and they're not returning them. I and mean, that was the whole thing. That's, if you're not going to set it up, return So we've had yeah. several of those where people have said, yeah, I'll set it up. But somebody here come and build three of them. And they're supposed to set them up on the East Coast. And it took a couple months. They finally got one of them set up. The other two, they're just. Having them with them for personal anti-radiation <laughs> devices, I'm like, that's not why you came here to build these. Yeah. So with your, if you're going to take, if you're going to build one, take one. Uh huh. I want you to set it up. I can okay. do that. I'll get plenty of trees. Yeah. Set it up in my backyard on the big tree that annoys me. Maybe it'll help it. <laughs> it drops its needles everywhere and it drives me crazy. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of stress that's going on with with. Uh, with Fukushima, and we are in San Diego, well, actually Ramona, and San Diego has a um, an EPA monitoring site there for radiation. It was it's been, it was fascinating as these were set up. Um, you I would see it. I would see it. Yeah, I would see the the netc. dot com um, has the EPA sites on it, mm -hmm. so I knew one was going in, and I'd watch. Okay, with on the phone, I set up. Da, 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 I knew the point. And every single one of them that were in, in that post, location, in, yeah, dropped. That's a that's a good way of doing that experiment because there there's a lot of, I guess a lot of people who actually can set up their own little radiation detecting stations and then send that to a website which broadcasts is on the full right. website. I don't know if that's the same website. No, that's but there's, there's a couple of them. But you could look at that website and right. literally purposefully plant one next to where you know one is close to and right. actually see if you can see right. it. So right. If that works, it will show up. It, yeah, well, and it, and it, it has. It, it did every every site. So interesting. Yeah, and it was great to watch. And you know, it's we're <laughs> we don't we don't have a boss, <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have an investor Even that needs to make us. some money and make some profit. Exactly. So we're not we. This is a nonprofit. It's the charter or nonprofit says we will never ever charge. For eliminating radioactive contamination, that's what our mission is. That's that should be everyone's mission. Do what you can with what you have. Well, John, like to, we good. like to travel. We like to meet people, and it really sucks when they're dead. And yeah, and, and Ken, Ken Shoulders <laughs> died of, of cancer yep. from San Francisco. A good friend of John's, mm -hmm. and I mean a, a lot of people. And strokes are another um, one of the symptoms of radiation poisoning. And there's okay. the strokes. You have autoimmune system diseases. All these different things that it'll never, it'll never, ever, ever come out. And what's sad is that it's the next generation, the next generation that keep getting weaker and weaker and weaker, like you're seeing in Chernobyl with mm -hmm. the, the grandbabies, yeah, with the holes in the heart and all this and the deform deformation. Right. All right. Well, good. Well, hopefully we can make some good out of it. Yeah. So. Um, but when with the by the time we go rolling out with the uh, 3D, uh, we'd like to also have those printed with uh, put the radio frequencies on. When we put the radio frequencies on, we've been getting AC and DC power both. So maybe in that process, we can figure out some type of um, a manner that they can put an elect uh, a magnetic field on and and create that. In the very least. We'll be able to open source the Hutchison power cells because it is the basics. So mm -hmm. we've got the Hutchison power cells, and somebody Which has already, a 3D printer, and they can print it up, and they can print up a bunch of these and find their house. Yeah, but the, the Hutchison power cells are already open source. You made a video about it, going through that process. Well, yeah, but I I did about 200 different versions. Yeah, and there are there are shapes and forms that are extremely complicated to hand build okay but they um they do some really strange things okay <laughs> i did a couple of videos of some of these strange things that the hemisphere 
um, power cells did. Okay. And, and I asked John too about the spherical shape. Right. He believes spherical's that's that's what it needs to be. Right. So so it may be you know building it in layers in a sphere. It may be having these points. John always talks about cat whisters and points. So maybe it's it's a bunch of tubes and we have to figure out how they work together and we make that in layers. You know, almost like building a a, a regular cell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to head out to lunch, dinner, whatever it is. Yeah. So, thank you.